the 2023 Detroit Tigers. This is going to be end of March and April. We're not talking about May, but this is the recap. Welcome back to Sean's Tiger Talk. The Detroit Tigers started off 10 and 17. And that was thanks to terrible bullpen, terrible starting pitching, and no runs. That's just not a recipe for success. Let's start with the pitching. How well have these guys done? They haven't done well. I mean, most of the guys were on the injured list. We had we had Casey Mize, Tarek Skubal, Michael Lorenzen started there. Bo Brisky went to the injured list. Yeah, it's not as bad as last year, but not a good start. Not a good start. Matt Manning would eventually go to the injured list after making two starts. He had a 4.63 ERA through 11 and two-thirds inning. Not a very good start. Spencer Turnbull would not be very good, giving up a bunch of runs settling to like the fifth or sixth inning and then giving up a blow which Eduardo Rodriguez starting off not very good giving up seven runs in his first two starts and then after that Blue Jays game he just he gave up one run and just started settling in just cruising kind of like the Tarek Skubal from last year to start Skubal was amazing last year he's kind of the guys where you know what you're gonna get you're gonna get six to seven innings maybe one run at the most and you're probably going to get a win with him. That's how Eduardo is right now, lately. And even before, like, end of April, he has just been outstanding. Amazing job from Eduardo Rodriguez. Now we got our bullpen. Our bullpen has been pretty meh. But after the, be the middle of April is when our bullpen is starting to become last year's bullpen, which was pretty weird. Tyler Alexander... Kind of helping gives like three innings to time. Pretty helpful. Mason Angler. He's kind of weird. Because he's kind of got that like reliever stuff where he just gives up a three run homer. But then just settles in for three innings and just like nothing. That's kind of what Mason Angler is. He'll go three innings. Give you good. Maybe one earned run. Pretty good reliever. And um, Jason Foley. I did not expect Foley to be good this year just because the shift is gone. Because last year's Foley, the majority of his outs were hit up the middle, but the shift was there and Javi was able to throw into the dirt and Torkelson would scoop it. But um, yeah, most of them were just hit up the middle. So I didn't expect Foley to be good this year, but Foley has been really good this year. He's been a solid two reliever. Obviously one goes to Lang, but... I'm going to get into Lang in a minute. Hold on. Just wait for that. Chase and Shreve. No. Get out. Get out of our bullpen immediately. Get out of our bullpen. I'm not even going to talk about him. Will Vest came in after a double header and then just stayed in. He's been... I don't think he's given up a single run this entire year, which is very impressive. Will Vest was good last year, and I really liked Vest, but he did not do good in uh, spring training, so they didn't keep him. Yeah, Will Vest, eight and two-thirds inning with zero earned runs. That's pretty impressive. Jose Cisnero. Man, that's a tough one. Jose Cisnero. Cisnero is, like, not good, but can be good. He's given up, I think, two or three three-run homer, homers, yeah. Just, he's pretty solid when you don't bring him in with two guys on. That's all Cisnero is. So... But he's just not very good. He just gives up too much hard contact. And I would I think I'd say to get rid of him eventually. But that's going to come in a minute. Hold on. Trey Wenton Genter, that guy, him, he got hurt. But he just hasn't looked really good. So hopefully he stays in the... I'm kidding. I'm not. I'm kidding. Hopefully he goes back into AAA because I don't think we need him. With Will Vest, Tyler Holton. Tyler Holton has been amazing. I think he came from a doubleheader as well, but they just kept him in. He's been really solid. Like, just in 
yesterday's game didn't do good, but we're not talking about May's game, so I'm not going to have any bias towards him, but I really like him. He's a good reliever for us. Now we're going to talk about the hitting. What hitting, you probably might be asking, but no bias from May. <laughs> we're not going to talk about May. So Eric Haas has looked okay. He doesn't have a single home run yet. I'm talking about before May, so yes. His framing has been a lot better since last year, and that's really helped the bullpen out a lot from other pitches that have been borderline strikes that have been called strikes. But Jake Rogers, the stash is back, and he is back, baby. Jake Rogers. Whew, I'm so glad he's back. He is an amazing defensive catcher, can throw guys out, can hit. Whew, I'm so glad he's back. Thank you, Jake Rogers. Spencer Torkelson. I thought he, man, I thought he was going to be back after that Houston home run. I wanted that so bad. After he hit a bomb into the train tracks, I thought Torkelson was going to be back, but he's just been okay. He's missed so many fastballs right down the middle. It's it's brutal for number one overall pick for the Tigers. And same with Riley Green. He, he has just not been great this so far this year. And I'm not counting May. So I know they've been really good in May. But April, man, they have just kind of been just outs. Riley Green just grounds out to second base more than... Like, more than anyone does. It's pretty impressive how much he does that. And how I'm pretty impressive how much Torkelson misses fastballs down the middle. I can't say that because I know it's hard, but for number one pick, I don't know. Okay, Torkelson's defense is amazing, and he's starting to hit the ball a lot better. So, good job, Tork. Jonathan Scope. Jonathan Scope needs to be DFA'd immediately by today. Yeah. Jonathan Scope can play defense, and that's it. He can't hit the ball. He doesn't have a single RBI. Even in May, he doesn't have one. Eight games in. Not eight games. Eight days in. Jonathan Scope doesn't have a single RBI. <sighs> Jonathan Scope. He needs to be gone. I don't know what AJ Hinch. I know his defense has been really good, but he needs to go, man. I'm so tired of his terrible at-bats. <sighs> okay. Nick Maton, his average is pretty bad just because he started off like 0-15, I think it was, pretty bad. He started off so bad, but he's been, I think he has one of the most home runs on the Tigers. I think so, I mean, it's not saying much, but Nick Maton has just been, yeah, he's got four. I went to that walk-off here run Homer, that was pretty impressive from Nick Maton. His defense has been really good, and he's kind of a utility guy. Him and McKinstry are taking over Harold Castro and Willie Castro's spot a lot better than what they would have. I love Harold Castro and Willie Castro, but they really are making him, making them look pretty bad. But not talk about Harold Castro and Willie Castro, who are hitting a whopping 200. Both of them are. Yes, I can... I'm, a, I'm sorry, okay? I thought Harold Castro and Willie Castro were better. That's on me. Javi Baez. He started off hitting 122 before getting benched in Toronto. He's now hitting 259 since then, which is very impressive. Is keeping the May stats, so that's kind of hard to discuss, but... He's hitting pretty good, really, really good since getting benched, which AJ Hinch about his ball benched Jonathan Scope and everybody else who's not hitting well. <laughs> Hinch, you, you should do that. But Zach, but Javi Baez, not talking about Zach Short yet. Javi Baez, very good. He is taking pitches. He's laying off some sliders, which is pretty uncharacteristic from Javi Baez. But yeah. Zach McKinstry, whew. I'm going to be one to say that I didn't know what Scott Harris was doing. Obviously, I'm 17 and a kid, so what is me saying that going to do for Scott Harris? But 
that was a great move from Scott Harris. Like, Zach McKintree has been really, really good. He started off not very good, and we were like, what is he doing here? And then he just became a really good hitter all of a sudden. And he's a utility guy, which takes Harold Castro's spot. <laughs> Which, he's a lot better than Harold Castro, clearly. But, very impressive. <sighs> Zach Short. He came in... I don't think I have a lot to talk about Zach Short. Because he's May. He came back in May. Yeah, we're not talking about Zach Short. He came back in May, so no more Zach Short. We're not talking about him. Akil Badudu. Okay. I am not a big Akil Badu fan. I've never been. I think he was pretty bad in 2021 he had that good start first like half of a month was just a kill Badoos, just league he was doing amazing then the league realized that he could only hit fastballs and then he just became awful <laughs> like a kill Badoo was not good in 2021 like he was decent he wasn't a superstar but he wasn't bad i'll give you that and then 2022 he was just awful don't know why he's still here. The Akil Badu train has been gone, and he needs to go. Riley Green, I already discussed with Torkelson. He just hasn't been himself lately, and he's just been grounding up second base, but he's been a lot better. Okay, Matt Bierling. Whew. Him and Nick Maton came in that Gregory Soto trade. Matt Bierling and Nick Maton in Philly didn't have much didn't have much at bats because of this, the Phillies lineup was so good that they were pretty much just platoon guys but now they're like getting a whole like a big shot in Detroit and they're actually excelling amazingly like Matt Bierling is an amazing defender out in right field he's been really good for us Nick Maton too but Bierling's very good and I like him a lot Miggy is kind of just like a, just an out, mostly, just, you're out, just cheer for me and you're out, okay? That's Miggy, but really good season and glad he was a Tiger. That's it for Miggy. <laughs> Alright, now we're going to be talking about people who should be going. I've already discussed this. I think Chase and Shreve should go. I think, <sighs> sadly... Cisnero, I don't know. I think he's on the fence. Like, I don't think he should go in, like, a couple months. He should be gone and, like, maybe trade peace if he becomes good. But nobody's going to want him. <laughs> so, I guess that. And I guess we're going to. Man, it's tough. Wenton Genter, Trey. That guy, he needs to go, though. Indeed. <sighs> Unfortunately... I'm just kidding. I'm not sad about this. Jonathan Scope needs to go. Bye bye. And Akil Badu needs to go. Those are the main guys. Get Parker Meadows up in AAA. From AAA. Get Justin Henry Malloy up. Because I know these guys will take their spot and like excel. Like these guys will become superstars. So let them do that. Austin Meadows. Forgot to talk about him. Kind of sad. But. All I'm going to say is hope he's doing well. He's got some, some, de not, what is it? It's just anxiety, anxiety, and he's having mental problems. So hope he's doing well. So yeah. Kerry Carpenter, he's just been so good. Like, he is what we thought he was in AAA, becoming right now. He's a superstar right now. Not actually like a Mike Trout guy, but he has been amazing. Just hitting home runs, missing home runs by like an inch or two. Like, he's hurt right now, but he'll be coming back and he'll be, he'll be good. He'll be good. And the only reliever I'd missed was Alex Lang. But all I got to say about him, amazing closer. Just so good. He knows how to get closed. He knows how to get saves. He is so good. And every time he's pitching, you should feel confidence. That is the Detroit Tigers 2023 
March and April recap. Please hit the like button and subscribe. We'll see you next time for the recaps. Yeah.